it's Jo here, founder of Freckles, and in this week's video I want to talk about a technique that is really useful for managing behaviour. The technique I want to talk about is one that I definitely didn't utilise enough, and to be honest it's really obvious and for some reason I just never thought about it, um, which is why I want to share it with you because I just think it's really powerful and it's one that I always go through in training um, when we talk about the different ways we can approach things. And that technique is asking why. It is so straightforward. When I say it like that, you're gonna be like, well, that's obvious, Jo. Um, but you'll be, I think you'd be surprised at how often we don't actually ask why. And if we ask why, we don't ask why until we get to the root cause of the problem. If you take a two-year-old or a four-year-old and they start sitting there and you know they get to seven and eight and they're asking you these questions, and they're like, why is the moon circular? And you're going, and you know the question goes on and on and on and on and they keep asking why and it's the same thing and eventually you have to find out the answer and it forces you to get there with maybe with or without the help of Google and um, to get there and it's the same thing with kids so when you've got a child that's really pushing back or doing something and instead of being cross or um, popping them on the naughty step or using a discipline thing you could just sit down and ask them why and it's not about taking what they first say at face value, it's about going, okay, so why does that happen? And why does that happen? And keep going and keep digging and keep digging and keep digging until you get to the bottom. And that's it, really. And it's so powerful. So I'll give you a quick illustration of a time when, well, the, the realization um, of when I found it really useful. And that was one time when I had um, one of my children was I think about 11 or 12 at the time and he wasn't a big fan of sleeping in his own bed and I had tried everything uh, well also I thought um, about getting him to sleep in his own bed and I told him specifically that night to go to bed in his own bed and I went up and he wasn't there and I was beyond cross I was just knackered at the thought of having to go through this thing that we went through four or five nights a week and so I just sat there and I said, but darling, why? Why don't you like sleeping in your own bed? And I explained how much I love my bed at home and how going back to that bed was great and I never wanted to get out of it. And I was really sad that he didn't feel that way. And, um, you know, and this went on and he was like, I just prefer this bed, I don't like that bed. And I was like, but why? So I was going, I was like, but why? I was like, I just need an answer. And it transpired that why was because his bed sheets were scratchy and the other bed uh, was brushed cotton. It was a memory foam mattress. It was really nice pillows. It was a snuggly duvet. Um, it was really cozy. It was a warmer room um, and all these things. And I was like, you are joking. I was like, is that the problem? That your bed is a small single bed. It's got some really horrible cheap sheets on it that you don't like. And when you've got a choice, you'd much prefer the nicer ones. I mean, who wouldn't? And he was like, yeah. So I rang his parents and was like, guys, I figured it out. And you know, I'm not saying you can all do this, but we went out and we did. We bought a new bed, we bought new linen, we bought a new duvet that was a, um, a nice feather one, we bought pillows. And you know, we invested in that because for us that had been such a problem that we were pretty much prepared to do anything to, to resolve it. And it worked. So simple. And yet probably for, you know, on and off for the best part of six, seven, eight years almost, I have never got that answer out of him. So next time you have a behavior pattern that is just pushing you to the end of your tether, instead of you know following through with some of the normal systems that we use, have a think and go, would sitting down here and just asking why and explaining why you're really sad that they don't love it or they don't behave in the right way, um, and, and trying to get to the bottom of it, and you just keep going until you get there. And I think you'll be surprised that probably, you know, eight, nine times out of 10, you will make a headway of progress with it. Uh, anyway, that's all from me this week. I will be back next week on another video on anything and everything to do with nannying, childcare, and children.